How do I run my Windows programs in Linux? That is easily the most often asked question I get on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook page, in chat rooms, forums, on my Discord channel, in pretty much any kind of communication that I have, you know, with viewers of this channel. It is by far the number one question I get is from people looking to switch from Windows to Linux or people that just made the switch from Windows to Linux. How do I get my Windows programs to run in Linux? How do I get a Windows executable to install in Linux? The simple answer to that is you don't. A Windows executable, a .exe file, as its name suggests, is, is a Windows executable file. It is designed to run on Windows. It was written to run on Windows. A Windows executable file runs on Windows. It does not run on Mac. It does not run on Linux. It does not run on BSD. It doesn't run on Android. It doesn't run on any operating system you can think of. It runs on Windows. The same as my Linux binaries. Uh, here today I'm running Zorin. Uh, a Linux binary, you know, all your binary files are in slash user slash bin, all those executable binaries that launch my Linux programs. Those binaries won't run on Windows. They're Linux binaries. You can't run my Linux binaries on a Windows machine, and I can't run your Windows executables on my Linux machine. That's just the way it works. Now, there are some workarounds to that problem. So I'm going to list five solutions to this question, how do I run Windows programs in Linux? I'm, I've got five solutions, potential solutions. I'm going to rank them best to worst. Solution one, find a Linux version of that program if it exists. You would be surprised that a lot of those Windows programs you're running, they have Linux versions. Uh, for example, I know a lot of people that run Windows that run popular free and open source soft uh, free and open source uh, software like Firefox, GIMP, VLC, LibreOffice, you know, all that stuff. You know, uh, all of that stuff is freely available in Linux just as it is on your Windows machine. So, uh, you know, you don't have to fight trying to get a Windows executable executable working on Linux. You don't have to try to install the Windows version of VLC on Linux. We have a Linux version of VLC. So uh, it's the same with a lot of, of pretty much any open source program probably has a Linux version, but even proprietary software. A lot of proprietary software makers now, uh, they realize the value of supporting Linux. Uh, even companies like Microsoft. Microsoft has a version of Skype for Linux. Uh, so, you know, a lot of your software that you think uh, you can't get running on Linux, the first thing you need to do is check to see if there's actually a version available for Linux. A lot of times you'll find versions available. Now, for those programs that do not have a Linux version available, the next best option is to find an alternative program to use. For example, uh, one of the most common uh, programs that I get people asking about is Adobe Photoshop. Uh, no, uh, Adobe Photoshop, they do not have a, uh, a version for Linux. Uh, it's pretty much strictly Windows and Mac. That's, that's the only two operating systems Adobe supports. So you can't get Adobe Photoshop to install in Linux. You just can't do it. So, but do you really need Photoshop? I mean, if your work or your school or whatever requires specifically that you have to use Adobe Photoshop. That's one thing. But you guys that just kind of tinker around a little bit with image editing, uh, you know, there are other image editors out there. Free and open source image editors. Free and open source image editors available on Linux. Um, the most popular, of course, being GIMP. You know, check it out. You know, check out some of these alternative programs, these Linux programs, uh, don't assume that you have to have those Windows programs you're used to. I mean, there is some comfort level you've gotten used to using your Windows programs. You've gotten used to using things like 
Microsoft Office, for example. But you know what? Give LibreOffice a try. Uh, the same thing with a lot of uh, graphical programs. I mentioned GIMP, uh, Inkscape, Blender, uh, you know, how about video editors? I get a lot of people asking about Windows only video editors, uh, such as, you know, the video editor that's part of the Adobe suite of software. Uh, I forget its name now. Uh, try Caden Live in Linux or, uh, Pativi or OpenShot or one of the dozen other free and open source video editors that we have available on Linux. Um, uh, you know, th there's other software that you, you can try. And actually, once you get used to using some of those Linux programs, uh, when you try to go back to Windows, you're actually going to miss the Linux programs that you've gotten used to. So, uh, you really just need to try to wean yourself off of those Windows only programs. Uh, I left Windows, um, back in 2009, I think was the last time I ran Windows on any computer I owned. And I've lived strictly in Linux since then. And I don't miss having any Windows programs because I just cut them all out cold turkey. Uh, if a piece of software was only available on, on Linux, that software was dead to me because I knew I wasn't going to run Windows anymore. Uh, so the only software that I was looking for was Linux software. You just have to get into that mindset. If you really want to leave Windows behind and get into, uh, into Linux, you just have to start running Linux software. You just have to forget that Windows software even exists. So obviously the best solution is find a Linux version of the software you need or find an alternative program that runs on Linux. That's not always a possibility. Sometimes you absolutely have to have a Windows only program. And, you know, again, it's usually for work or school. Uh, and if you have to run a Windows only piece of software, the next best option, uh, install Wine. Wine is, it's not an emulator, but it kind of is. Wine actually stands for Wine is not an emulator. That's actually what Wine stands for. But it's kind of an emulating program. Uh, basically, it is a, like a Windows environment. It allows you to install Windows programs. It allows you to run Windows executables. I'm going to launch Wine Tricks here. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm running this Zorn VM because I knew it had Wine installed. And you know, here Wine Tricks allows you to install an app, install a benchmark, install a game. Uh, and of course, it's got, it's already, uh, kind of got some things pre-configured to install some of these, uh, Windows only programs. So, you know, things like 7-Zip, uh, I'm not sure if 7-Zip has a Linux version, but they have like Microsoft Office 2003, Microsoft Office 2007, uh, uTorrent and WinAmp and things like that. When I switch over to the install a game function, uh, you have a very large list of Windows only games that you could install. And of course, that's assuming that you actually have the software, you know, the uh, Windows disk or whatever. Uh, you have to have those files. I mean, you're not getting these games for free. They're assuming you bought these games. You actually own these games. And if you do, you can install these in Wine with the help of a program like Wine Tricks. So Wine is an option. And uh, if you get a program to run correctly in Wine, it usually runs really well. In fact, there are some Windows only games that people swear run better in Wine than they ever do on Windows. So, you know, that's a possibility. But in my experience, because I've installed some stuff in Wine in years past and occasionally for friends and family that need Windows programs running on Linux, Wine is hit or miss. There are some programs that run fantastic in Wine, run just as good if not better than they do on Windows. Then you have another group. They run, but there's some missing functionality. There's, you know, some bugs, some quirks. But overall, it's okay. You can kind of get by with it. And then there's there's a pretty large percentage of programs that just don't run at all in one. Uh, there's some Windows programs that just do not work in one. So it's hit or miss. You know, you, you can't always 
depend that every Windows program you want to run is going to run correctly in Wine. You, you have to try it out and see. But there is a website, the winehq.com website, the Wine headquarters. It is a database of pretty much every program anybody's tried to run in Wine and their results, basically. And they grade them, uh, you know, from, I think, gold, silver, bronze is their rating, meaning, hey, gold, things work great. Silver, okay, bronze, not so great. And then, of course, there's also the category of it doesn't run at all. So, But wine is probably your best option if you have to run Windows programs inside Linux. The next best option is to just install Windows in a virtual machine. Now, why is installing Windows in a virtual machine not as good as running Wine? Because if you're going to want to run Windows programs, you know they're going to run in Windows in a virtual machine. They just are. They're going to run a lot better than probably in Wine. Because I just said Wine is kind of hit or miss. Some programs are not going to run at all in it. Well, the reason I, you know, have to rank install Windows in a virtual machine lower than Wine, one, you actually have to have a copy of Windows. Uh, you have to buy a copy of Windows. You have to have a legal copy of Windows. You have to support Microsoft Windows because you bought a copy of it. That's not something I personally want to do. And that's not something I encourage people to do. Uh, two, yes, your program, your Windows programs will run inside Windows in a virtual machine, but graphically intensive programs do not work well inside a virtual machine at all. So games, don't try it you're not going to be able to game in a virtual machine. Uh, things like video rendering are probably just not going to happen either. Anything that requires uh, serious uh, power from your graphics card, it's just not going to work in a VM. Well, I say it's not going to work in a VM. Uh, advanced users, there are things you can do to to improve the performance of a VM, there's a technique called VGA pass-through that passes control of your video card to the VM. Uh, but this is not something a new user could do. A matter of fact, even though I know it's possible, it's not something I've ever done. Uh, so this is not something for a Linux novice to try. So anyway, moving on. The next best option Dual boot Windows and Linux. I never like recommending this option uh, to new users because it's always new users that want to do this. Dual boot Windows and Linux. And new users are not the kind of people that need to attempt something like this because trying to get two operating systems installed side by side, you're more than likely going to mess something up along the way on the install. Uh, there's a good chance you're going to have some problems installing the bootloader. Also, even if you get it installed correctly, dual booting, you know, Windows and say Ubuntu side by side. Don't be surprised if some update of Windows wipes out Grub down the road. And then, you know, again, if you're a new Linux user, you're not going to have any idea how to fix that problem. Uh, so it's not an option I really recommend to new Linux users but it is an option. The other reason I don't recommend dual booting Windows and Linux because if you're still trying to run all your Windows programs and you're going to be spending all your time in Windows even though you're dual booting, why are you dual booting? If you're spending all of your time in Windows running Windows programs, why not just run Windows full time? And that brings me to my worst option, my worst solution for this uh, this problem. And number five, forget about Linux altogether. Just stay with Windows. It is an option. It's not a good one because I don't like recommending people stay using Windows. But if you have to use Windows programs, especially if you have to use Windows programs for hours a day, you know, if you really have to live in Windows only programs, unfortunately, you kind of you kind of have to stay on Windows. You really don't have much of an option. But anyway. Uh, I know that's probably not the kind of answers a lot of you guys are, are, are looking for. I mean, the answer a lot of you are looking for is, oh, there's an easy way for you to get your Windows programs installed in Linux, and they're going to run fantastic. The truth is, no. Again, Windows-only programs 
they run in Windows. Your Linux programs, they're going to run in Linux. Mac programs run in Mac. You just have to recognize the fact that if you want to switch to Linux and live in Linux, you need to install Linux software. That's ultimately the place you have to get to, the mindset you have to get to. But anyway, some things to think about. Peace, guys.